So hello everyone. I um I just lost everything I was going to say. I am very happy to invite you to be with us as two black women are talking. Um today's subject is one that's been troubling me for quite a few days and I'm sure tr troubling a lot of people, particularly black women. Uh, and we're going to talk about the untimely and cruel death of Sonia Massey. Um, my name is Samsara Morgan. I'm the founder and executive director of the Oakland Veteran Birth Foundation in Oakland, California. I'm a doula and counselor, coach, hypnotherapist, and I probably left out a few things. Um, and I'm happy to be here today talking with beloved Stacy. And yes, thank you for having me. My name is Reverend Stacy Virginia Reed. I am a life coach, certified professional life coach, ordained reverend, um, work as a sober house manager. Um, so I work a lot in recovery and I'm just so grateful again to be having yet another conversation. Indeed. Yes. So um would you like to talk about the circumstances? Would you like to share that or? Um, well, I, I think I'm not alone in, unfortunately, not being in shock that we've lost another um, Black person, especially mm -hmm. um, when we speak of Black women in particular, um, to gun violence abuse period um but yet another um murder um mm -hmm. of police brutalization um i think this one just hit a little bit harder um simply because from what we saw i mean it, it was very traumatizing to wake up to the actual murder on instagram that first initial day um but I think, unfortunately, um, it has to be seen again. On camera, a woman with a boiling pot of water, um, again, not, she was directed to get um, the boiling pot of water off the stove or turn it off or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. But it was not raised up. It, I don't think she was using it as a weapon in any, any case. Um, but again, no taser. <laughs> no talking, no conversation, no discussion. Um, three shots, one to her head. All three shots uh, in her face. All three shots in her head. Um, so here's just... some more background. Mm -hmm. This is a woman who seemed to be alone in her home, although she right. is a mother. Her, mm -hmm. her children are big. They're, they're big kids. Um, she called for help. Right. She called the police because she felt that there was somebody around her house mm -hmm. or po possibly an intruder. And so mm -hmm. she called for help. And mm -hmm. then these police came. They did. They searched the perimeter of her home. Mm -hmm. They did that. And this one gentleman, and I use that term very, very, very loosely, he knocks on her door and she responds in her little bathrobe and she he's a mountain above her mm -hmm. she's a slight middle-aged lady mm -hmm. and his whole attitude with her was like she had committed some kind of a crime mm -hmm. the way he was speaking to her mm -hmm. was demeaning and distrustful and mm -hmm. suspicious of her Right. So now we came to find out, we in the wide world came to find out later that this woman has been diagnosed with schizophrenia. And I was going to mention mention that as well. Yeah. Um, so this is a fragile human being. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you you could sense that a little bit on the the tape. Um, 
her calling out, you know, I'm going to rebuke you in the name of Jesus, right? That doesn't necessarily have to refer to mental illness, but even my gut could tell something was not right, you know, but she was harmless. She was not a threat in any way. She had no, as you said earlier, he asked her to turn off the water that was mm -hmm. boiling because she was going to make tea. Mm -hmm. And then he told her, put that pot down, put the pot down. Right. So right. she picked up the pot and she spilled it on the ground. Mm -hmm. And I think that that was her, just her. She's trying to comply. Right. Everything that was done to her, she was trying to comply. Mm -hmm. Even when he was going to shoot her, he is. she is saying, I'm sorry. Right. To the person who's killing her. Right. After she rebuked his ass. <laughs> mm -hmm. Correct. And even that was her trying to help him. Because if you've got some demons in you and they get rebuked. Right. That's helping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, there, so, are, there are some people saying that she made the comment of rebuking because she has schizophrenia. I don't, I'm I'm not down with that, but I'm open right. to different opinions. Mm -hmm. She was a Christian, a church going mm -hmm. Christian. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so she, the, the, around her, she felt evil. She felt evil before he showed up. Correct. Correct. So this could be in her reality. Mm -hmm. This man is a physical embodiment of the evil she's been seeing, feeling. Correct. Which and then also, go ahead, I'm sorry. And then also on body camera after the fact, he calls her a crazy B-I-T-C-A. B yeah. So again, we have people in power being placed as police officers to protect mm -hmm. the community. Protect and serve. And serve, right? And that includes the mentally ill. That includes Black women. Mm -hmm. That includes anyone calling for help, period. And the first initial move you make is to shoot. It's it, And then it makes me wonder how many other people has he encountered? How many other Black women has he abused yep. and disrespected? Yep. Um, and why do we have to see yet another murder on camera, on body cam, to replace, <laughs> to, to people in position of power, using this power to murder Black people, Black women, Black men, people of color, the mentally ill, the sick, the disabled, the homeless, and how much training do you need to stop, I mean, the taser wasn't even used. The taser would have been too much. The taser can kill you. The taser can also kill you. So it's like, again, you don't get to use a, a weapon mm -hmm. of, of death against right. somebody who has what? A pot of water? And if you see the video, which folks who can see it, I do think people should see it. I think that video is a gift from God because you see that even if she did fling that water, he was right. far away from her. And there was a bunch of stuff between him and her that if the water splashed on it, nothing would have, maybe a drop would have got on him. Absolutely. 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 And when that cop left that house and went out to talk to the other cops, Mm -hmm. And he went and reported the issue. He mm -hmm. said she killed herself. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that film that mm -hmm. his partner, this was his partner's body cam. His body cam was off. His body cam should have been on, but of course it wasn't. Mm -hmm. His partner's body cam was on and he kept it on. There's another film on, on, on YouTube that you can find that's beyond mm -hmm. that moment of he killed of him killing her, but him, how he deals with the other cops outside and what he's saying and how he's acting so bold and bodacious. Right. Like he just right. didn't kill someone. 
-hmm. Not a not not an ounce of of guilt. Mm -hmm. No. When his partner wanted to go get his medic bag, mm -hmm. he says to him, oh, that's a headshot. That. She's not going to make it. That's right. And even hearing her father speak and him speaking about, you know, times back in the day, years ago, him growing up and to think that somehow we haven't gotten any further Yep. Then the enslavement, the civil rights movement, the acts of brutality that has gone on in this country and continues to exist to this day against people of color. For sure. And then it also grieved me as a caretaker, you know, um, having to call the police several times for um, my mentally ill family member. In, in learning that I need to on the 911 call and that's if they pick up <laughs> right because I've, I've lived you know in Oakland California where the line is busy in my neighborhood 911 is busy 911 is busy literally or I will have a cop show up at three o'clock in the morning and leave me a voicemail not even check or knock on my door to see if everything is okay right um but having everybody to, could be have, deceased in the house and they right absolutely absolutely and having to speak on the 911 call and notify the police that he is mentally ill or he is currently on drugs he does not have any weapons right uh arm surgery located you know showed like trying my best to pre you know prepare yeah. the encounter with the police and so when is it safe to call the police? That's the thing. That's the thing. And that's what you know, people experiencing domestic violence, they don't call the police. Right. Because though you don't want your man to be beating you, you don't want him to get shot in the heart either. That's right. Absolutely. 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 I know for myself, I have just been, this this shooting happened two days after the 4th of July. Mm -hmm. The reason why it's such a big deal right now is because of that video, which is another reason why I, I pray, I'm, I'm praising God for that video. Right. Because people would have not known exactly what happened. Exactly. And she could have just been a crazy bee who mm -hmm. killed herself. That's right. That's right. Now, luckily, I happen to think that she has the kind of family that wouldn't have stood for that. Mm -hmm. And they would have raised a lot of stink and they would have investigated, like, exactly how was she shot? Could a person really shoot themselves? You know, that that would have had to have happened. And she definitely is. She is a well-loved woman. Mm -hmm. People adored her. Mm -hmm. Her community loved her. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they would have raised the stink about it because they were like, firstly, generally speaking, a good Christian lady's not going to kill herself. Right. Right. This is not suicide by cops in any way, shape, or form. Suicide, you know, be, be black while making tea. Mm -hmm. You can add that to right. the list of things. Exactly. That black people can't do without some cop trying to kill them. Absolutely. Good, good title for this discussion. Black white tea, black wild tea making. It's it's horrible, it's outrageous, and it's very scary, because yeah. every time I leave, you know, and now I'm in Philadelphia, every day I make it home, I'm thankful, you know, and how, you know, how stressful it is to go throughout the day. I try to start my day with prayer and gratitude and believing in God's protection. But my mind is always on high alert of the possibilities of what's out there. Um, and to not even have the measure of confidence, you know, that, and, and I've been fortunate out here, you know, to have some good experiences with, with, you know, 
police officers, but not everybody has obviously those experiences, right? And just it takes one bad <laughs> move, one, one bad, bad apple, right? Traffic ticket, you know, like what whatever the situation may be, um, that everyone is, you know, on high alert, very stressed and hypersensitive to these type of, you know, occurrences that could possibly be them one day. In my, in, in my primary work right now, I'm a, a doula. I am helping women to have babies. And, you know, the the stress on Black women when they're pregnant, mm -hmm. just leaving your... This poor woman was in her house. Mm -hmm. She was mm -hmm. in her house. Exactly. Where is her oh. safe place? Where is the safe place? That's right. That's right. We had a shooter, was it about seven, eight years ago? Insane young white man who went into a black church when they were doing Bible study and killed everybody at the Bible study. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those folks weren't safe in their church. Right. Very scary times. And then we have these people who are like, why don't black women smile? Why are black women serious all the time? That part. A completely unprotected, completely unprotected. Like what? <laughs> when I get home in the bosom of my family, I might some, do some smiling. But right now, I'm in the street, mm -hmm. and I'm in full battle attack survival mode, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it is a challenge. It's such a deep challenge for those of us who believe in God. Mm -hmm. You know, the question is, well, why does God let this happen? That's right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, no, I, I'm certainly not one with the answer for that question, but I know it's the one that causes me to cry. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and then there's, you know, there are people doing evil. Mm -hmm. And this, this very sweet woman was just trying to survive. Mm -hmm. And the thought that her last words on this earth were, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. very sad mm, mm, mm. Very it totally sad. brings up uh, my memory of, of George Floyd who died calling for his mama mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. his safe person right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I you know to go back on the subject of um, and I've had this experience several times. It was once, you know, not once, more than once being in domestic violent situations where I I chose, you know, the abuse over calling the police on my abuser. And then there would be other incidences with having black, you know, a black um, man in the house, whether it's a family member or a romantic partner needing help may may not be on a domestic level but there's a situation um and then me being accused for being a cop caller because right. that would automatically imply that I'm trying to get this person of color within the house right um killed by the police right when all I'm trying to do is bring some safety or retrieve property or whatever the situation is right, right. um and so there is there's even within our own community, right? How we have stipulations, <laughs> we have boundaries, you know, mm -hmm. and when is it okay to call the police and when is it not okay to call the police? So this, this. Well, this, we're supposed to protect black men. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have been. And we do. To the detriment of our, our own lives. And our children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're supposed to protect them because there's a greater evil that's attacking black men all the time. Mm -hmm. And so we need to protect them. A oh, spiral of despair. And then there's this stuff about our black children. Because one other thing I was thinking about today was like all these uh, Instagrams and TikToks with Black families talking about how they beat their kids. Mm -hmm. And proud of it. Mm -hmm. 
And so where's the safety for those children? Right. Because correction doesn't require the kid to get beat. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> correction and making sure that the young child, a kid has morals and uh, responsibilities and boundaries when you're when you're when a, your child is afraid of you you're just teaching them to follow the rules you're teaching them to be a slave mm -hmm. it's similar mentality to dear miss massey saying i'm sorry mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was a it was a master slave moment right there mm -hmm. absolutely Bless her heart. Very scary. And the fact that it could happen to any one of us. That's right. So, <laughs> certainly not a happy little conversation today, but unnecessary one. Um. There has been a call put out to make Sunday a National Day of Remembrance for Sonia Massey. I completely support that. I am doing what I can do to maybe get some doulas and some of our moms and dads out. We have to decide where we're going to meet and all. Um, if folks want to know about that, please. Uh, Follow me on Facebook, mm -hmm. Samsara Therese Morgan on Facebook. Um, search Samsara Morgan on Instagram and you'll get my handle on that one. We'll just, we will, so a decision will get made between now and like midday tomorrow so we can do something on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I think it's the least we can do. Mm -hmm. And, um, there is a call for legislation around making sure that cops that have bad reputations like this cop did. He had been had several cop jobs and been fired from several cop jobs and then finally ended up in Chicago ready to kill somebody. So someone who's definitely not learning any life lessons there and be, someone who was being made emboldened by the fact that he didn't get the punishment. Mm -hmm. Good news is, and I do have to say that they did arrest this guy relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. He was fired rel relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. And that's unusual. Right, exactly. It's very mm -hmm. unusual for a white cop, mm -hmm. cop period, right. to have recompense, recommend so quickly. And he was not, I don't believe he was given bail. Like he's in jail until they process right. further what his thing is. Right. Um, and so maybe of all of that, we can say, okay, there's a little bit of growth. There's a little bit of change. Mm -hmm. Right. If we have to, it would, I would think it would be common sense, but since it's not, but we do need to have legislation saying that if you have been fired for, for you know, the guys had DUIs, you can't drive for FedEx if you have a DUI. Again, we talk about white privilege all <laughs> the time. You can't and, drive for FedEx. Again, we I think in, on our last video, we talked about the care and entitlement. The entitlement, the privilege, it just, it's disgusting to me. Because if we make one error, it can cost of our, our lives. And most times it does. You mm -hmm. know, it may not be death, but it's definitely not reemployment. It's right. definitely we're not keeping jobs. Our reputation is ruined. We have right. records for life, whether proven innocent or guilty, right? But somehow, <laughs> yet again, White privilege prevails. And I'm I'm glad that this time there was no question. Right. And there is the outrage. And there is, you know, observance of, you know, her on Sunday or any day, right? And so I think that as a community and as a country, maybe we're getting a little bit better. But 
at the end of the day, it should not be happening, period. It shouldn't be happening at all. Period. At all. To anyone. I mean, when, do, I mean, I mean, I, people regularly call me a sourpuss because like, oh, things have changed so much. Like I've been alive 64 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I remember, even though I was a very little girl, I remember my grandfather talking about things for him in the South. He was raised right. up in Virginia. Mm -hmm. Racist, so racist, racist, racist. Yep. And I remember my mother, who was with me until I was in my early 20s, talking about things that my grandfather shared with her. My grandmother was born in Panama, so she had a different mm -hmm. different life, a uh, different worldview. Mm -hmm. But, you know, my grandpa was a Black man in Virginia. So he had all these stories of racism, of, of going out on a date with a double date with another couple, with another couple and the cops stopping them and raping both the women mm -hmm. and leaving them mm -hmm. and driving off. Mm -hmm. And the men having to stand there and witness that and not be able to defend mm -hmm. the ladies they were out with for the evening. That's right. How is this any different? As heinous as rape is, at least those two women, what, years, 70 years ago, 80 years ago, those women were able to go home. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, we no, it's not. Chances. We don't get those chances. Dead is dead. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I'm comforted deeply by the thought of her having tea with George with George Floyd mm -hmm. and his mama. It is a comforting thought and there's a truth in that for me in my belief system. Mm -hmm. But uh, she should still be alive. She should still be alive. And we should have adequate mental health care. That's right. Where she could have gone somewhere and talked about feeling unsafe and they would really help her. Mm -hmm. That's right. And She's described as a woman that would do anything for everybody. She was always a person doing things for everybody. Mm -hmm. Typical Black woman MO. That's right. Meanwhile, she's sitting in the house alone struggling with mental illness. That's right. And so many of us do. We are tired. We are tired. <laughs> Exhausted. Exhausted. Yeah. So, what can we do? Self-care. We self talk a lot about self-care. We need to talk. Every time we talk, we need to talk about self-care because really... we we have to continue mm -hmm. our our lives are a revolutionary act our survival is an fu to the establishment the establishment does not want we, until they put us back out in the cotton fields mm -hmm. they're they're really fine to have black folks disappear as long as you know they can't okay. work off of us. They want they need a certain number of us to be in jail because as soon as you go to jail, people start making money off you. That's right. That's right. That's right. So they need that. They need folks to clean houses and do things like that. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but other but other than that, they y'all can they can just go die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The deplorable disrespect heaped upon pregnant black women this shows you that mm -hmm. it's not a it's not a civilized country that doesn't take care of the elders and the babies right and those carrying the babies mm -hmm. so there's the, if, if 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 you take care of those two groups everybody else in the middle is going to be good that's right you know, this country takes care of nobody. You're on your own. That's right. Mm -hmm. So on that unhappy little note, <laughs> we 
everybody gets to take very good care of yourself, cherish your family and friends. Mm -hmm. Not one other moment is promised. Mm -hmm. Poor Miss Massey's family, her sisters. I just finished watching her her funeral service, which was beautiful. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful. Very heartfelt. Her best friend spoke. Her sister spoke. Ministers mm -hmm. are really powerful. So it looks like they have a really good lawyer. Oh, yeah. He's going to kick. I, I'm spacing on his name right now. I feel bad about that because that, that brother's amazing. He's just like, whoa, he's mm -hmm. laid it all out. So um, if there is justice to be had, the, the big justice would be that she just pops back into her body and we get, get to step in. <laughs> but it doesn't work like that. But um, this this city, that particular town and city needs to get sued so hard that they finally change how how what people can be police in their community. That's right. It has to change financially. Someone has to pay significant financial consequences for things to change. Yeah. Period. Yeah. That's capitalism because mm -hmm. it's not really about caring for people no it's about avoiding litigation <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and avoiding also, having to give their money for self-care you know reminders tips is to keep talking about it to definitely when definitely you are feeling upset when you are having moments of grief or being triggered um with your own past traumas, current traumas, present traumas, um, to, to open up and share yeah. um, those around you and your support network. If you don't have a support network, I would encourage you to find one, <laughs> to reach out and tell someone um, that you are struggling, that you do have these thoughts, um, feelings, et cetera. I know that um, you did um, an Instagram of uh, a video mm -hmm. uh, was helpful because we're not alone right and sometimes we think that you know we are in a, a lot of symptoms of depression and anxiety is to close in and isolate right um, and linger in our own heads but it does help to to talk and to share if you you're not a talker maybe you like to write um journal exactly um, post on Facebook your your thoughts your feelings but as long as somebody knows um you would be surprised to know that there are people that feel um the same or at least have empathy and sympathy um but it's good to get those feelings down into to share with others absolutely absolutely a journal can be just definitely your best friend if you're an artist make art mm -hmm. Yes, yes. If you're a singer, sing. Mm -hmm. I ended my day listening to all this gorgeous spiritual gospel music last night before I went to bed because I just did not. I was like, I don't want to dream about this, God. You know, I just, yeah. Yeah. I don't think about this. Mm -hmm. And it's an inside job because the world is so ridiculous. And, and the there's world. also, you know, support phone numbers, right? Um, two one one, three one one. Um, on alive numbers you can call. Um, you can always reach out. I know we put our uh, website and email addresses under these videos uh, for life coaching. We're not therapists, we're not counselors, but we are life coaches and ministers. So we're here to help as well. Absolutely. And if you need emergency numbers, if you want the unalive hotline number. I will try to post that under this video on YouTube. If I do not, feel free to email me and ask for it and I'll send it to you. Yes. So, and my email is lsamsaramorgan at gmail.com. Samsara spelled S-A-M-S-A-R-A-H. And last name is M-O-R-G-A-N at gmail. So send me an email. And I'll be very happy to send that. What's nice about those those 800 numbers is that they're open 24 hours a day. Yes. 
Yes. And they're pe warm, empathetic, kind people who can uh, can support you with whatever you are feeling. Whatever you're feeling is appropriate and right. Don't shame yourself. Mm -hmm. you know, some people will be like, well, what, get over that. It didn't happen to you. Mm -hmm. it, we are all connected. Yes. Mm -hmm. We are all connected. <clears throat> Absolutely. What happens Absolutely. to one happens to us all. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, at, especially as also as Black women, this happened to another Black woman. Mm -hmm. Right. I really want to say, too, that I I truly feel, and you can tell me how you feel about this, Ms. Stacy, mm -hmm. is that I really think white folks need to process this together. Mm -hmm. Black folks need to process this together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we're at a point um, where there's enough education <laughs> to seek out what we need to seek out. There's enough support groups. And I think it's okay to have your own tribe of people, um, not in a racial prejudiced way. Um, in a family way. It, it, a family way. And just to to have some sensitivity too, that our, our pain, mm -hmm. you know, like the song says, they not like us. <laughs> we, I mean, there's, there's a line, right? And so when people are grieving and suffering, um, and just trying to process their own feelings. Sometimes other um, groups of people just in conversation can trigger. So we're, I know me personally, sometimes I'm not in the space to educate you about how a black woman feels. I want you to already know. <laughs> so that this is, so, yeah. This, yeah. yeah. There's this, also the subconscious thing that sometimes white people have, not all white people, but some Mm -hmm. And that they subconsciously want the black person to take care of them. Right. Right. To and really they just they don't get how that's incredibly offensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm really yeah. not available to hear how you feel right now. I don't right. hate you. However, mm -hmm. that you get to call your therapist or you get together. If you're an ally, get together with other allies and talk about how effed up it you feel as a white person to hear that a white person did this yet to a black. I, but that, those are valid conversations, mm -hmm. but it's not a conversation to be having with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people are struggling with that, you know, at the workplace, <laughs> neighbors, friends. I think that that that's a deep, you know. That's a deep issue as well. Or and more people, people just to vocalize, you know, what their boundaries are when it comes to um, how we support or not each other in cases like this. And that's really support. So that's really hard work because what if it's your boss right. at work? He's going right. to come sit at your desk and talk, share all of his racial feelings with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're like, you'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely happens you know it's like no i i know i do not have to care about this right now right there is a god and it's not me Go that's through. right <laughs> that's right so you're gonna come you're gonna come trauma dump on me so you feel better you walk away feeling right. better and i got your trauma and my trauma Right. Me. And we've done that as black women. This is what we have done and continue to do for years. And now we're at the point where, no, we are exhausted. It's enough trying to care for ourselves because the majority of us are out here single, taking care of ourselves and our children right. or our dependents, whoever those may be. Right. Um, and then to put more pressure <laughs> that now we're supposed to educate or care for it's it's just a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. And some of us are saying, back off, <laughs> you know, and give us, you know, those private moments to process. Exactly. And, mm -hmm. and if you're the boss, give the person a raise. How about that? You want to help out? Mm -hmm. Support a black owned business. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. There are lots of ways to support. 
there's lots of ways to tangibly support it mm -hmm. rather than trauma dumping. Yes. You yes. know, mm -hmm. and so I'm thinking we should end unless there's more you want to say. I was always cutting no, room. I think we've covered a lot. I want to hope that everybody gets what they need to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. I want to give all of God's blessings to Ms. Massey and her her beautiful family. They're yes. beautiful people. Yes. I want to put fire under that amazing attorney mm -hmm. so that at least they, they won't have the comfort in their hearts, but they will have a certain level of comfort and uh, be able to make change in their community to keep other people safer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, peaceful peaceful rest to Sonia Massey. May she rest in peace in the God of her love and understanding. Um, and may her memory be a blessing. Amen. Amen. So we're going to say goodbye to you lovely people. This video is offered as a blessing. We do hope that you receive it as such. Be well. Yeah.